In this video, we're going to look at torque just a little bit more, and specifically we're going to look at it when we uh, have oriented our rigid object at some angle with respect to, in this case, the horizontal. So I have a rigid object which I put here in red, and we'll say that that's the length of total length of L, and I've oriented it at some angle of phi with respect to the horizontal. And what I've done is I've, I've gone ahead and drawn in the gravity vector, Right, this is mg, so this this rod has a mass of m. And I'm going to ask, what is the torque provided by gravity about the end here? So this might be some point O. And I'm going to say, what is the torque provided by gravity about the point O? So in the last video, the strategy was to um, take the force vector and arrange it into components and see which one provided a torque and which one didn't. So let's do that. Let me arrange this into components. So I'm going to have some component that looks like this, right? And of course at this point this is an inclined plane problem and we know how to solve inclined plane problems. This is the angle phi and maybe O is a bad choice. It looks like a theta. Let's say this is some point P. Yeah, there you go. Alright, so I have the angle phi here and I have my one of the components, and I'm going to draw the other one up here. Uh, I could just as easily draw it here, but I like it uh, on up there on the rigid object so we can see what's actually going on. So this component is going to be mg cosine of theta. Not theta, sorry. Cosine of phi. This will be mg sine of phi. And if, if all the things are equal, gravity is going to be applied at the center of mass of the object, which in this case I've made the center of the object, the geometric center. So the other thing I need to calculate the torque is this distance here, which is L over 2, right? And that it's getting really messy, so let me just erase that. But what I'm looking for is the distance, half the distance L, right? So the torque provided by gravity, oh, sorry, uh, so the mg sine theta component, the one that's going parallel to this object, just as we saw in the last video, provides no torque, right? The line of action of that force passes through the point of rotation. Uh, this is trying to open a door by pushing on the door towards the hinges. <laughs> it doesn't work. So the mg sine theta, this component provides no torque. All the torque is provided by the mg cosine theta. So that torque is then mg cosine, well, let me give it to you like I should. The, the moment arm, which in this case is L over 2, times the force, which is mg cosine of phi. Right? And so let me put the force in parentheses. mg cosine of phi is my component of the force. All right, so if we can all remember that, let me do this a slightly different way. So let me go to uh, a new page. I need to draw a new figure, so let me pause the video to do that. All right, as if by magic, here's my drawing. Uh, so this is the same system I had before, and I want to calculate the point of, or sorry, the torque of gravity uh, about this point P here at the end. So instead of resolving the gravity into components now, I'm going to find what's called the perpendicular distance, right? In this case, the moment arm is not actually L over 2. It's something slightly less than L over 2 because mg is oriented at an angle. So the perpendicular distance can be confusing, but if I draw the line of action of this force, right, it looks like that. And if I'm looking for a distance between the point of rotation and that line of action, I mean, I've, I've literally got uh, an infinite uh, set of possibilities there. So let me draw this line. Uh, you know, there's a distance here between the point of rotation and that line. There's a distance here. There's a distance here. There's a distance here, 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 and so on and so forth. But there's only one distance. There's only one way I can draw this line so that it intersects the line of action of that force perpendicularly. And that is to draw it like this. All right, so I've got my nice right angle 
here. And so this distance that I have in orange is L over 2 cosine of phi. And that is the perpendicular distance, right? It's the distance from the point of rotation to the line of action of the force. The specific distance uh, in which that line is oriented perpendicularly to that line of action. So now that is my moment arm. So I've got the force mg times the moment arm, L over 2 cosine of phi. And if I'm going to calculate that torque, this is what this looks like. Torque is equal to the moment arm. So let me do this, L over 2 cosine of phi. I'm going to put that in parentheses. That's my moment arm. Times the force, mg. So in summary, I found the perpendicular distance to be L over 2 cosine of phi. I multiplied that by the force, which is mg. Now let me go back and compare it to my previous result. L over 2 times mg cosine of phi, right? So math is, uh, at least, you know, this is not vector multiplication. This is standard ar arithmetical multiplication. It's commutative, so these torques are the same. Of course they're the same. They have to be the same uh, because they're the same force on the same geometry and the same, literally the same system. But in this example, the, MG, the cosine of phi came from resolving my gravity into components and my other one, the cosine of phi, came from finding the perpendicular distance. All that to say, these methods are completely equivalent. So whichever one makes sense to you is the one you should use. My personal preference is the one in front of you, finding the perpendicular distance or the perpendicular moment arm. But if that doesn't make any sense to you, then by all means, resolve those vectors and pick off the perpendicular component of that vector and that's the one that provides the torque. Whichever one makes the most sense to you, it doesn't matter to me which one you use. I hope this was helpful.